Hi everyone, this is Soil from QuickNode and in this video, we will learn how we can redirect an ENS domain to a decentralized website. In this video, we will learn about ENS domains, we will learn how ENS domains work, and then we will redirect the ENS domain to a decentralized website stored on IPFS. We will be using the blog web page or website which we created in the last video. If you haven't checked that out, check it out in the info card linked here. Crypto wallet addresses are complex. They are in the form of a string of random characters, which we as humans cannot really remember. So to solve this, there is a DAP or decentralized application called ENS Domains. ENS stands for Ethereum Name Service. And using that, you can register a ENS domain for example, something something dot ETH or ETH. And using those domains, you can map your wallet addresses or link your wallet addresses to these domains. So whenever you want to use your wallet address, you can basically just use these ENS domains. The benefits of using these domains are as follows. The first one is the obvious one, you don't have to remember your wallet address. Instead of that, you can just use a human readable domain, which will be a name or any character or string of your choice dot ETH. That will be a domain. And the second one will be the eradication of errors, because whenever you are sending funds to someone, you might make a mistake where even a typing mistake of a single character in the wallet address string might end up the transaction going to a different address or a different wallet address and the funds might end up in someone else's wallet. So ENS addresses or ENS domains eradicate that because the wallet addresses are usually more rememberable. And the third one is where you can redirect a ENS domain to a decentralized website which is usually stored on decentralized storages like IPFS. So the benefit of redirecting a ENS domain is that we don't have to always remember the CIDs or the content identifiers of the files which are uploaded on IPFS. For example, let's say we have a file hosted on IPFS. We can obviously interact with the file or we can obviously access the file using the content identifier and a gateway, which we saw in the last video, we can do that. There's nothing wrong with that, right? But the thing is that if you have a website which is being used by a lot of users and you make a update to a website by making some update in the code base of the website, and then you upload that updated file to IPFS, the new file will have the new CID. So because of that, your website will have a new CID for that file. So your users won't always be able to remember those CIDs for the updated files. So instead of that, what you can do is you can redirect a ENS domain to your decentralized website. So whenever you update your code base and update the file, we'll just have to update the CID in the ENS panel in the ENS dashboard, then that's it. Your users won't have to always remember the CID. So they can just type in the ENS domain and access the website. We will learn all of this, how we can do this. But before that, let's first understand how ENS is different or similar to DNS. Whenever we want to access a website, we access it using its domain. For example, if you were to access QuickNotes website, you would use quicknote.com to access the QuickNotes website. So what happens in the backend is the domain gets translated to an IP address and using that IP address, the resources of the website is located. And under the hood, what happens is your browser will send a request to a DNS server so that the server then can get the IP address associated with the domain name. And then the IP address come back to the browser and then browser sends the HTTP request to the actual server where the resources of the website are located. And then the server gives back the resources of the website again in the form of HTTP request. And this is how the website is accessed. In terms of ENS, there are two main smart contracts which are used 
to maintain the ENS domains and to maintain the resolving addresses of those domains. So the first contract address called the registry contract address maintains the records of all the ENS domains and it also has some rules around what the owners of the domains can do, how they can create subdomains, etc. It holds three main pieces of information like the actual ENS domains, then the owner of those domains and the resolver of those domains. Which brings us to the second smart contract for ENS, the resolver. The resolver smart contract is responsible for resolving a ENS domain for a wallet address or if a IPFS file is redirected to that domain. So what happens is whenever you want to resolve a ENS domain, you would send a request to the registry smart contract. The registry smart contract will give you the address of the resolver for that particular ENS domain. And then using the address of the resolver, you send a request to the resolver smart contract. And from there, you get the actual address, which is redirected to that ENS domain. There are some public resolver smart contracts which ENS uses, but you can also create your own resolver smart contract based on the ENS standards. So now that we know what ENS is and how ENS works, let's learn how we can redirect an ENS domain to a decentralized website. So first of all, if you don't have a ENS domain, you can get to one by going to app.ens.domains and then you will see a web page like this. First, you'll have to connect your wallet over here and then search for the desired ENS name that you're looking for. So web3 is king.eth. Okay, looks like this ENS domain is available. So once that's available, you can click on that and then select the number of years you want to register your domain for. So I already have it for one year. And then what might happen is that one wallet address can have more than one ENS domains. So if you want to use this one as your primary ENS domain, which will redirect to your wallet address, you can do that by using this toggle. And then you'll have to click next. Let me show you how you can register one by registering one on a testnet because I already have one on the mainnet. As you can see, I can see my ENS domains by going to my names. So let me quickly switch to a testnet network, Sepolia, and this will reload again. So to register a ENS domain, you just have to type the name which you want to register. Let's register web3king.it or web3isking.it. And then you will have to send a transaction to ENS to register that domain and uh, it will send a transaction to ENS and then it, we will get a 60 second timer so that in that period of time no one else can register for this domain so we will have to wait for 60 seconds and once that 60 second is done you can just send a new transaction and register the domain all right so now let's click on finish then it will send one more transaction so once this transaction is completed, your ENS domain will be registered. And as you can see, our ENS domain is successfully registered. You can view your name like this and then make changes like edit profile. You can edit your ENS profile, add a profile picture, etc. Now let's switch back to mainnet. All right. Now let's go to my names and then select the ENS name over here. So now let's see how we can map this ENS domain, which is silesane.eth to a decentralized website. To do that, we will have to go to records. After that, click on edit records, and then you will find three options like text, address, and other. In address, you can redirect any address other than your address to your ENS domain. In text, you can bind a text or some metadata to your ENS address. And then in other is where you actually redirect your content or the website's content to an ENS domain. So let's go to QuickNote and then get our file. 
the file which we uploaded on the last video. Let's double check that it's the correct file, the blog file. Yes, that is. So now what you need to do is just paste the entire URL with the CID and the gateway in this content box and then click save. And now what will happen is we need to send a transaction again because we are making some changes on the blockchain. We are adding a data. We are adding this content record on our ENS smart contracts or on the ENS smart contract so that this record will be binded to our ENS domain. So let's quickly confirm the transaction. And then we wait for transaction to get confirmed. All right, so now that the transaction is confirmed, we can see that we have something under the content hash option. Now let's try to access the website or the blog website using our ENS domain. We will have to type the entire domain with an extension .limo. So .limo or .limo is a ENS gateway which we need to use because the browsers like Chrome, Safari, the normal browsers does not support ENS out of the box. We have to use a ENS gateway to access the website redirected to the ENS domain. You can just use the ENS domain without the .limo extension in browsers like Opera and Brave. But for Chrome, we'll have to use the extension. So as you can see, we are able to access our website using our ENS domain over here. Now let's try to update something in the HTML file and then upload the second HTML file and then try to redirect that file or that new version of the website to our ENS domain. So let's go to the HTML file. You might remember this from our last video. If you haven't checked that out, do check it out in the description. So let's add another blog. We will call it third blog. And let's try to run this file to check the updates. Okay, we can see that we have the third blog over here. Let's find the file again. Let's rename it index dot html but this time we will add a v2 let's go to our quick note dashboard let's upload this file to ipfs using quick note ipfs spinning it's as simple as just dragging and dropping and your file will be uploaded so you can see that the file is already uploaded this is the new cid we will just need to update this file in our ens records so let's copy the url double check it okay this is the new one new version edit the record go to others then add the new record save it we will again have to send the transaction because we are updating some information on the blockchain. So once the transaction is completed, we should see that our domain is now redirected to the new version of the website. All right, now that our transaction is completed, let's see that the change is visible on our website too. Okay, it is. As you can see, the domain is silesane.eat dot limo so this is how you can host your decentralized website and then redirect it using a ens domain and then whenever you make any changes to the code base of your website you just have to upload the new code base to ipfs and then redirect the new ipfs file to your ens domain so if you learned anything from this video and found it helpful, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the Quick Note YouTube channel and let us know in the comment section what more topics you would like us to cover. Thank you everyone.